reaction of ice. For a million years, the Earth has cooled and warmed, cooled and warmed. A few degrees less, ice advances over the north. A few more, ice shrinks back to the mountains, to the poles. A dozen cycles of cool and warm, glacial and interglacial, each cycle triggered by change in climate, the tilt and wobble of the Earth, the eccentricity of its orbit, maybe something else dimming the sun. When the cooling comes, winter snow survives the summer and glacier building begins. Old snow collects in hollows, gets worn down to form fern or neve. Year after year, the weight of new snow compacts the fern, turns to ice. Year after year, ice builds, turns to heavy glacier, a mass of downslope plastic flow. In cold climates, glaciers freeze to their beds, move only a centimeter a day. In milder climates, some basal melting occurs, easing friction. The ice mound may move a meter a day. Mountain glaciers are often born in cold valleys and bowls high on the slope. The ice grows, quarries the side of the bowl, shatters rock and forms a cirque. As the glacier flows, it picks up earth and rock, smoothing, gouging and sculpting the surface through plucking and abrasion, leaving behind grooves or striations in the bedrock, direction indicators for rivers of ice. The sharpened bits of rock move through the ice, move to the edges, get laid down as till or spat out as moraine, laid out on the sides it is lateral moraine, where two glacial lobes meet, flow together, it is medial moraine, if they don't quite touch, interlobate moraine, laid out beyond the snout of a glacier end moraine, as the glacier retreats recessional moraine, the farthest point of advance marked by terminal moraine. After the ice is gone, a sharpened landscape remains. Between cirques are spiny arets where once were rounded ridges. Above the arets are Matterhorns, pyramidal peaks carved on three sides, four. Between the horns are knife-edged saddles or coals, and below the cirques, the valleys once ice dammed are suspended above the big U-shaped valley. Meltwater drops down in Bridal Veil Falls, dumps alluvial fans on the valley floor. The walls above, the arms of the mountain, are sheared off by broad valley bottom ice, leaving behind truncated spurs midst the hanging valleys. Lakes abound in the area once glaciated. Tarns sit in the cirque bowls. Finger lakes fill over deep in parts of the U-shaped valley, often made bigger by a dam of moraine. Paternoster lakes fill back ends of terraces, glistening beads along the glacial stairway and kettles form where chunks of ice sat unmelted. Sediment settles all around, ice melts, the kettle fills with water. Torrents of melt break through moraines, broad spillways carry cold water seaward. Now these big valleys have only small misfit streams, and down at the sea, where the glaciers once pushed shoreward, the valleys are flooded and form fjords. Away from the alpine ice fields are continental glaciers. The same snow builds up on flat land. Year after year, a thousand, ten thousand, the ice sheets are big enough to press the entire continental plate down into the mantle. When the giant glaciers retreat, water emerges to a scoured and sorted landscape. Ribbon lakes form on the ice margins. Dammed by the ice behind, they join, coalesce in great proglacial lakes. Some still here, Superior, Erie, Athabasca, some gone, Agassiz, Wisconsin, Missoula, their memory now in lacustrine deposits. The rivers carry meltwater out from under ice, spilled up beds of gravel called eskers, appearing now as winding snakes of rounded rock. Many long hills are left in the wake of a glacier, spoon-shaped drumlins, hills of moraine, quarried stone mounds, roche motines, crags of tougher rock with tails of rubble behind, and solitary erratics, big rocks cast far afield by the slow violence of glacial ice. <laughs> <laughs> 